Welcome back everybody to another episode of the College Cookbook. Today we're going to be making homemade biscuits and gravy from scratch. Just like old Gam Gam used to make, if you know what I mean. And you're probably thinking, Colton, biscuits are going to be very hard to make. I'm just not going to watch this episode. But trust me, they're way easier than they sound and they're just so much better than canned biscuits you're going to get at uh, your grocery store. So yeah, just follow along. It's really easy. All right, step one. About 30 minutes before you start all this, you're gonna to wanna to take two sticks of butter and just pop them in the freezer because you're gonna want your butter to be nice and cold when you're making all this. Okay, so this recipe calls for one and a half sticks of butter. So what we're gonna do is cube up these two sticks into very small cubes. Um, that way you don't need like a food process or anything. So what we're gonna do here, I just like to cut off little slabs and then just cut it into like fourths, maybe thirds, and then cut that into Small pieces. So you just get nice little squares like that. Explain how big it is. Very small. But once it's cubed, you're going to take it and pop it into a bowl. Because after we cube it all up, we're going to put it back in the freezer until we need it. So that way it just stays frozen throughout this whole process. So why are we cubing these? Or why are we getting these into tiny little cubes? It's because this is what's going to give these nice little air pockets and layers in your biscuits. Because if the butter stays frozen, when it melts in the oven, it's just going to release the steam and kind of make your biscuits nice and more fluffy. And then... All right, you gotta move quick because it's starting to melt. This is chop time. This is where, what's that guy's name? Ted Allen's gonna start getting on you. All right, once you got your little bowl of your one and a half sticks of butter cubed up, you're gonna pop it back in the freezer. Wash your butter hands. March on, march on, you fighting, sick of more, sick of more. March on, you stick to the tribe, troop, I, S, U. If you sing the Indiana State fight song while you wash your hands, it's the perfect amount of time to kill the coronavirus. Now that we've got the butter all cubed up, ready to go, we're gonna start working on our gravy. All right, here we got Bob Evans uh, regular pork sausage. This stuff is the best sausage they got in the market. Anything else compared to this, not good. So go to your grocery store, get some Bob Evans. If they're out, just don't make gravy until they got Bob Evans. This is a pound of um, sausage. You're gonna take this, you're gonna piece it in small bits into a cold pan. This is very important. You don't want to turn the heat on yet. You don't want to preheat it. Just put it right into the cold pan and then you'll turn the heat on when it's all in there because um, if you start with a hot pan, you're just going to render or you're not going to get as much fat out of the sausage as you will if you start with a cold pan. So put the sausage in the cold pan, then turn the heat up. Then you're going to get all that fat inside the sausage to just kind of um, render out and then you'll have just a way better tasting gravy. So trust me on this. You're going to want to get all the sausage out of there. You don't want to waste, you don't want to waste any money. You waste that, that's just money into big porks pockets right there, right into their wallets. You don't want that. Down with big business, down with big agriculture. Wash your pork hands. Okay, now that we've got the sausage in the pan, we're gonna turn the heat just to medium, just right down the middle. Boom, right there. So that, while that's going, we're gonna work on our biscuits finally. So um, while you're working on your biscuits, just keep your eye on your um, sausage. Right, right now we're just browning it. We're not gonna add anything to it right now until it gets nice and brown. So. While well, that takes a little bit of time, we're gonna work on the biscuits. Hey, shout out Clapper Girl, Terre Haute, Indiana. So this recipe calls for four cups of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, uh, the butter we already got cubed up, and then one and a half cups of cold milk. So we're gonna leave the milk in the fridge right now until we need it, and then we'll measure it out and put it in here. So we're gonna start with the flour. How many cups of flour was it? Four cups of flour. Boom, here we go. So what I like to do, get it in there, kind of pile it up like this, and then you're just gonna level it out with your finger, just like that. You're not trying to pack it down in there or anything. Mound it, level it off, four. Now we're gonna get two tablespoons of sugar. Pop that right in there. Two tablespoons of sugar, then we're gonna do two tablespoons of baking powder. Same thing with this, one. Look at that, you can hear the sausage start going. Boom. Two tablespoons baking powder. Now we're gonna do two teaspoons of salt. It's okay if you get a little messy here, baking's messy. Teaspoon of salt. One, two. Now what do we got? All right, so this is it for our dry ingredients. I'm just gonna take your wood spoon, mix it together. Just get them all incorporated together before you add any of the wet ingredients like the butter and milk. I guess butter is a dry ingredient, but we're just gonna mix this up before we mix the butter in there. 
All right, like I said, you're going to want to keep your eye on the sausage while you're uh, making your biscuits. So I'm just going to give it a little turn here. It's starting to brown up on the bottom. You're going to get that nice fat rendering out. Like I said, you're getting more fat um, starting with the heat off than you would have with the heat on. So we're getting a lot of fat in the bottom here. I'm just going to ground it up a little bit here. This is when you can start getting it to the size you want. Going back to mixing our dry ingredients together. I like to kind of toss the bowl with one hand, spin the spoon with the other hand. All right, that'll be good for that. Now we're going to add our butter into this. Remember, our butter was in the freezer after we cubed it. Butter going in. Nice and solid. Mix it around with your hands. Get in there. Get dirty. If you feel any really big chunks of butter, this is where you can kind of press it out with your fingers. Yeah, right there, I just had a big chunk. You just press it out with your fingers. Get it all incorporated. Make sure all the butter has a nice coating of flour on it. Make sure you're not getting anything stuck to the bottom of the bowl. That shouldn't happen if your bowl is dry, but just be careful. I'm liking the size of all the butter here. You want the butter to be roughly like pea size. So if you feel any that are just a little too big, don't be afraid to just um, pinch it with your fingers, get it broken up a little bit. All right, our next step is to get our milk into our biscuit batter, our biscuit dough, I guess. Um, it's gonna call for one and a half cups of ice cold milk. Not ice cold, I don't know why I said that. Here you can use whole milk, 2% milk. Um, whatever milk you have on hand, it works, it's fine. Two cups or one and a half cups. Kind of move it around, don't just pour it in one spot. You're gonna want a nice even distribution of milk. So you're gonna fill this about halfway up, pour that in there. If you think your, or your dough is a little too wet, that's where you can add more flour whenever you're mixing it. But right now just go with one and a half cups of milk. Stir up your sausage a little bit. All right, take your spoon, mix it together. You don't wanna overwork your dough here. Just get it nice and incorporated. Make sure all your um, dry is hydrated. Um, as soon as it gets hydrated, you're done. Well, you're not done, you're done mixing. You kinda want your dough to look a little shaggy. A little shaggy dog action. Get anything left on the spoon, that's good stuff there. All right, for the most part, I think this is pretty good. I'm gonna come up there and show you what this looks like. Here's what you want. Here's what you want your um, biscuit dough to look like. If you can still see, there's still visual chunks of butter in there. That's perfect, that's what you want. That's what's gonna evaporate in the oven. It's gonna steam up your biscuits from the inside. They're gonna get nice and tall, nice and fluffy. But yeah, here's what you want to see. Now you're gonna take flour. Flour a little bit of your work surface. Now you're gonna take your batter. Roll it out. All right, here, you can just press it together a little bit. You're gonna have some loose chunks, just make sure you get it all back in there. All right, at a certain point, you're just gonna overwork it, so just make sure you get it to where you want. You're gonna to wanna to press it out into a sort of rectangle. Might be a little rough of a rectangle, but as close as you can get. Then you're gonna take it. This is how you're gonna get those nice layers that any good biscuit has. You're gonna take it and just fold it in half on itself. Press it down. Press it back into that shape you had it. And you're gonna do this about five or six times. Fold it again, boom, there's two times. It might have looked a little too dry earlier, but now you're gonna see that it's all getting incorporated. It's all in there. You might have a little extra butter, pop that back on top. I'm gonna to stop at five. I think it feels pretty good. This is where you're gonna to wanna to press it out with hand. You don't need, or with your hand, you don't need a rolling pin or anything. Just press it out into a pretty good sized rectangle. You're gonna want it about, it's just an inch high. Ah! This is where you really wanna get a nice rectangular shape. How's that look? The sausage is pretty much done browning, so we're gonna turn the heat down a little bit, so we're not overcooking it. Forgot to preheat the oven. Take your pan, line it with some parchment or wax paper. You're gonna take your knife, you're gonna cut this into squares. You don't need a biscuit cutter here. We're gonna cut them into squares. This way you're not wasting any of the extra um, biscuit that's from the edges. You don't need to bring it back together and get a weird shaped one. We're just gonna cut it into perfect squares. Uh, we'll cut this into thirds and then fourths. So that way we're gonna get 12 biscuits. I'm gonna show you one of the inside pieces. That way you can literally see the layers. Look, you can already see the layers. You can already see the chunks of biscuit in there. These are gonna bake up perfectly. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. This is gonna be amazing. You can just fit them on your pan however you want. Some people put them together so they bake into each other. Um, I 
I don't really see the point of that. So I'm just gonna put them like inch or two apart, just enough to get it to all fit on the pan. All right, with the rest of the stick of butter that you didn't use within the biscuit uh, dough, you're gonna melt that down to brush over top of the biscuits so they get nice and brown. I'm just gonna put it in the microwave until it gets nice and melted down. Here you just want it um, like completely melted, that way you can just easily spoon it over the top of the biscuits. If you have a like a little kitchen brush, definitely use that, but I don't. Most people probably aren't going to, so a spoon, just drape it over the top, perfectly fine. Don't wanna to stand too close. These things will kill you. Fry your brain. We've got our melted butter. Just gonna take a little bit, spoon it over the top, brush it down. Each one should get a nice little coat over the top. Like I said, it's just gonna help brown it up. They're gonna look beautiful. They're gonna look like restaurant biscuits. All right, all the biscuits got a nice layer of butter. Now we're gonna pop them into an already preheated oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 to 15 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown, completely cooked through. Okay, now we got the sausage nice and crumbled up. We got all that fat sitting in there on the bottom. That's perfect. That's what's gonna make this gravy delicious. We're gonna take, oh, our flour towel already. So you're gonna take your flour, your tablespoon, and you're gonna add three tablespoons of flour to your browned up sausage. You're gonna want it to, this is gonna kinda make that, the start of your gravy. The flour is mixing in with all that fat. It's coating up all your sausage. Once it's nice and mixed together, this is where we're gonna add our milk to the gravy. You can use whole milk here or 2% milk. It all, it, whole milk is gonna give it a little more flavor, but 2% still tastes fine, still tastes really good. We're gonna add two cups of milk here. All right, we got our milk in there. You're gonna need more milk later. We're just gonna let this all get together now. And once it thickens up, we'll add more milk to it. That way we can kind of see how much we're gonna need. But for right now, just mix that two cups of milk in there with your sausage and your little bit of flour you had. Let's get that all nice together. Remember your heat's down a little bit now. Right now I have it about medium low. So not at medium, it's just a little, little below medium, about halfway below medium. We're gonna let that stew together. It's gonna thicken up. That flour is gonna just bring everything together. It's starting to thicken up. We're gonna add another cup of milk to it now that it's all thickened up. Cup of milk going in. All right, now that we've got that milk in there, we're just gonna mix it all together again. You see any big chunks, try to break it up. I mean, this is starting to look like my grandma's gravy. I mean, cannot complain about that. We're gonna add one more cup of milk after this all thickens back up again. The gravy right now is still a little brown because we haven't added all the milk. So you'll see once we added the other cup of milk after this all thickens back up, it'll just look like perfect gravy. Maybe you want to have your friends over for a nice breakfast, maybe a little brunch after a night on the town, maybe a little hungover, you want to get a nice uh, recovery meal. Biscuits and gravy, come on, that's perfect. Uh, you can easily double, triple this recipe. The gravy is the same way. You can make, just double and triple the recipe however you want. Um, this would be so much fun to make for a bunch of friends. They'll be super impressed by your homemade biscuits, but really it's really easy to make. Um, it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of a mess. Um, but turns out delicious, trust me. I'm gonna show you what the gravy's looking like right now. So that way um, you can keep your eye on it and make sure yours is looking like mine. We still haven't added the last cup of milk, but um, I just wanna show you um, where I'm at in, the state, in this process of making the gravy. That way you can see if you're at the same place. Look at that. Still a little runny. We're gonna let that thicken up a little bit. We're gonna get another cup of milk in there. Just gonna mix that all in, let it thicken up. I'm gonna turn the heat back to medium. This really isn't super expensive either. I mean, you probably already have flour. You probably already have the things that you need to make the biscuits in your fridge. If you don't, you might need to go buy baking powder. Um, I really can't think of anything else you won't have. But other than that, you're just gonna need to buy sausage to make the gravy. It's pretty amazing how Simple of ingredients come together to make this kind of like classic, delicious. It's gonna be good every time. I mean, if you fuck up the biscuits a little bit, they're still gonna be good. Pour gravy over it, you're not even gonna taste that they're bad. Like, come on now. You put, you put this gravy on anything, it's gonna taste better than it did before. And remember, 
This is an important fact. Keep this in your brain. Your fat from your sausage, from anything really, your fat from the sausage is gonna be solid at room temperature. So whenever you're making this gravy, you're gonna wanna pull it off the heat, like when it's a little too runny. We got a minute on the biscuits. But you're gonna wanna pull it off the heat when it's just a little slightly runnier than you want because once it's off the heat, the fat's gonna um, solid solidify back up and it's gonna thicken up your gravy, it's gonna pull it all together. So you might think, oh, this gravy's a little too runny, but it's fine, once you pull it off the heat, it'll come together and just be that perfect gravy you like. 12 minutes is up, so I'm now gonna take a peek at them. Oh, f it's hot. They're not as brown as I want on top, so we're gonna give them a little more time. Pop it back in there, maybe about three, four minutes. Um, then it should be looking perfect. Perfect. The gravy's coming together. It's all coming together at the perfect time. This is how we like it here in the college cookbook kitchen. It's all about efficiency, getting it done at the same time from the piping hot pan to your mouth within minutes. New catchphrase. Gonna get your mitt or whatever protection device you have for your hand going into the oven. Pull these puppies out. Turn the oven off. Probably should have done that before I stuck my hand in it. Remember, you want it to pull, you want to pull it off when it's a little, a little too liquidy. Pull it off the heat. Oh sh hold on. Important step here. Salt. You're gonna to want to season your gravy a little bit. Just sprinkle some salt over the top. A little bit more. Salt it to your taste. Mix it together, off the heat, onto the hot pad. Look at the layers. You can see the freaking layers that you put in there from folding it so many times. I mean, look at that. You can see the little holes where there was butter evaporating, creating steam. We're gonna pull this, we're gonna tear this open a little bit. I mean, look at that. Ooh, but they're nice, flaky, crumbly, buttery. Perfectly golden brown on top. They're delicious. Haven't tried them yet, but I know they're gonna be delicious. All right, we're gonna take a biscuit. We'll get a good looking one here. Pop it in half. Take the gravy. It's perfectly thick and voluptuous and juicy and tasty. I'm gonna pour it. I'm left-handed, so you're not gonna be able to see it. You're gonna pour it. Oh, look at that. Oh man, oh man. All right, we're gonna take a little bite now. Taste the amazing little masterpiece you made here in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know. However long it took you to watch this and make them. All right, gonna cover that. Mmm. The biscuits are perfectly like crunchy on the bottom, fluffy on the inside, crispy, crunchy on top, nice and buttery all the way throughout. It's really amazing. The gravy, perfect. Like I said, this is just like biscuits and gravy, your gam gam, your grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle. Someone made these for you when you were a kid. You haven't had them since, now you can. This is amazing. Make sure you like, maybe leave a little comment of what I should make next. Some people made the chicken fried rice and it made me so happy to see that people were making it. They said it was really good. I'm pumped. Biscuits and gravy is going to be even better. Um, take a picture, send it to me. I'll retweet, put it on my story, shout you out. Um, yes, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, 